Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. So what you're looking at here today is the fundamental, the basic building blocks of a power inverter. Control circuit, um, MOS, uh, drive MOSFETs, and the power transformer. So in this video, um, I'm going to begin a series to show you guys how you can make this DIY and how you can make it all programmable using uh, a cheap Arduino module. And what I'm going to be changing going forward will be some software coding to allow us to accomplish the different kinds of power inverters. So for those of you who may not be familiar with the different kinds of power inverters, so you have the square wave inverter, which is where we're going to start. Then you have a modifying sine wave inverter, which is basically a square wave inverter, but um, a little bit more controlled there. And finally, you have the ideal inverter, which will be the pure sine wave inverter, which is the best because it's almost as clean as you know the mains power coming into your home. No noise at all. So in this uh, series, I'm gonna be showing you guys everything. Nothing will be hidden. So if you would like to follow along with the process, I'm not gonna be able to show it all in one video. So if you want to be able to follow along as I make the software changes, as I make the small hardware tweaks, make sure you subscribe to the Innovation Lab so that you will get notified when I release the next videos and the next videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a super simple programmable smart inverter using Arduino microcontroller and just a few components. So I'm going to do my best to keep this as simple as possible. So the first thing that you will see here, this again, as I said, this design is very simple. So we'll go from the battery pack that supplies the DC that we're going to turn into AC, the control circuit, which is what you're seeing here, the, the drive MOSFETs, and the power transformer. And that is it. So now let's look at this, at a, let's take a closer look to see each component or each section of the design to see what they are actually doing. So the very first thing that we have here will be our 24 volt lithium phosphate battery pack and it goes from there to our control circuit. The, our control circuit comprises of the Arduino uh, microcontroller module and our MOSFET driver, our two MOSFET drivers that you can see there. And given that the microcontroller requires 5 volts and the MOSFET drivers require 12 volts. So I'm using two DC to DC bulk converters here. These are switching bulk converters. I will make another video to talk about these converters because I think they are great. So the five volts I'm using to power the Arduino module and the 12 volt I'm using to power the MOSFET drivers. The Arduino module provides the programmable drive signals and the MOSFET drivers kind of conditions the signal a little bit to make it clean and raise it to about 12 volts pulses to drive our MOSFET modules, as you can see here. So looking closer, you can see the four MOSFETs on each module, left and right. And finally, the MOSFET modules now drive the primary coil of the power transformer while the secondary coil of the transformer now goes to our load. So for the load, we're going to use this load box here when we test the system. So that is it in a nutshell. So let's look at the block diagram and go over the schematic and then we do some testing. So now it's time for some testing and to test this design we are going to be using this visual load box that I showed in uh, my previous video. So this is nothing but a group of high power incandescent light bulbs that I'm going to be bringing in. So each of these channel is loaded with a 200 watt incandescent bulb. So I have 
five channels, one, two, three, four, five. And even though this power inverter can deliver more than 2000 watts, because it doesn't have a feedback circuit, so in a way, this power inverter is unregulated. So I'm gonna attempt to only drive it to a thousand watts. And as we do that, we will keep an eye on the output waveform on our oscilloscope here. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we energize the board. And then I'll put enable. So now that our output is enabled and you can hear the transformer hum, you can see the waveform on the oscilloscope. So, um, so the next thing we're going to do is to bring in one channel at a time. All right, let's do it. So that's 200 watts. That should be about 400 watts. That's about 600 watts. And now we're close to almost 800 watts. And there you have it. Now we turn off. All right, so as you have seen it, the system works as we expect it to work. So we were not able to get to a thousand watts, even though we had a thousand watt load on the system. And that can be explained because this system here is still unregulated. As I said, this is just the fundamental building blocks. So there should be a feedback mechanism that allows us to maintain the output voltage a certain level. And that was why even with the five 200 watt load channels um, all engaged, we were only getting about close to 900 watts. All right, but still, I think that's impressive. So, all right, let's do see if we can do a different kind of load and test a uh, inverter to see if it can drive other loads. All right, let's get to it. All right, so for this test, I'm gonna to try to use this uh, inverter to drive my entertainment system, which is basically the Bluetooth speaker and my TV to see how it will perform. All right, let's give it a try. my friends as you've seen in the video we have used this setup this inverter to drive this TV and this Bluetooth speaker and to show that it works well it works as it should the only noise that you can actually hear is the hum coming from the transformer and that's because the transformer is just right there if we put the transformer inside an enclosure you will not hear that hum so that's it in a nutshell so if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up 
And if you would like to see the modifications that I'm going to be doing with this, if you want to follow the series, don't forget to subscribe. Also share our videos to help our YouTube channel. So and as I've mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do mod different modifications using the same uh, uh, fundamental building blocks. So what I'm going to be changing is I'm going to be changing different software codes to allow me to go from square wave inverter, which is what we have now, to modifying sine wave to a pure sine wave. And I'm going to be adding a feedback loop to such that we are not going to be having voltage drops when we apply load. All right, my friends, I hope you had fun watching this video and I will see you in the next video.